Hi everybody, I'm Tommy Clayton, an Open Syed middle school teacher and writer. Uh, excited to dig into lesson nine with you from uh, unit 8.1, the contact forces unit. Uh, if you're like me, your students have probably used the word friction a lot, but really never quite grasped what that meant or like what that is. And this lesson I think is really exciting because it helps students actually figure out what is happening. Um, and really uh, be able to explain what it means uh, to, to use the word friction and what's actually happening in terms of collision. So let's check out how this all unfolds. All right, let's remind ourselves first how we got here. So in the last lesson, um, we spent a lot of time tracking the energy and uh, we figured out like where it came from, where it went, but then at the end we were kind of like, well, where did it all go, right? The cart and the box stopped. And so in this lesson, we're really wondering about like where that energy went and we left off thinking about like the track and the air might have something to do with it so we want to find out more about the contact forces and the interactions between um, the air and the track and like what that means in terms of energy so let's take a look at this lesson at a glance this lesson is an investigation lesson it is two days it's going to take you about 60 minutes to set up um, there is uh, a lot of hands-on investigation in this lesson. Uh, it does require a device um, for a particular station. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, there are no additional related videos. There is, however, a simulation that students are going to access. So um, just taking a look at a glance on day one, um, we're going to come in and share our results from that uh, home learning investigation. So students will partner up with someone who did the opposite investigation from them. So if they did the shoe one, they'll talk to somebody who did the note card one, they'll share their results. Um, and then we're going to uh, revisit our ideas about speed and mass and how those relate to kinetic energy. And then we're going to dig into doing uh, some investigations. We have a bunch of stations set up and we'll highlight that moment in a little bit and talk more about that. And then we're going to construct an evidence based explanation based on what we saw in a particular station. Then when we come back on day two, we are going to jigsaw the feedback with our group. Um, we're going to revise that model from last time. So we're going to add all the new stuff that we figured out about friction and air resistance. And then um, we are going to introduce some home learning. So here's what we figure out. Uh, there are millions of little collisions that are happening when objects move over surfaces or through the air. And when that happens, energy is actually transferred out during those collisions. Um, there is an increase in the kinetic energy of the particles of like the track and the air. Um, and uh, there's a relationship. The rougher the surface, the more collisions there will be. Uh, the larger the surface, the more collisions there will be when it moves through the air. And then on day two, we kind of like put all this together and we realize that like friction and air resistance are contact forces and they apply force that's like opposite the direction of motion of an object, right? So they're really like slowing things down. All right, so let's look at some key moments here. So um, let's focus on part three. So in part one, we share our home learning. In part two, we remind ourselves of some of the relationships between speed and mass and energy. And part three is where we conduct some investigations. And these are set up in stations. So station one is uh, the cart launcher system. Uh, but this time we add a fan and we add a note card. So we try um, four different trials, essentially. Uh, we launch the cart uh, toward the fan. We launch the cart away from the fan. Then we do that all over again, but with a no card on it. Um, and we measure how far it goes. Uh, station two, we look at some data sets. So we look at some graphs of um, relationships between energy and wind. Um, and then uh, station three, we take an eraser and we rub it on the table and we measure the temperature of it, uh, of the eraser and the table before and after we do that. And then station four is where we see some zoomed in images. You can see here on your screen, there's a zoomed in image of like carpet, um, some different surfaces. And then we uh, observe a simulation of a box sliding over a rough surface and we watch what happens with those particles. So we're really collecting a lot of evidence as to what's going on with friction and air resistance. Part four, right after this is where we uh, 
take some time to individually explain like what's really happening with friction and air resistance and like how do those actually cause energy transfer uh, between a moving object and like the other parts of the system. And so uh, students are going to focus on one station to use as evidence. Um, and they're just going to write this in a notebook or on blank paper. There's no handout for this. And this is the end of the uh, first day. So you're going to want to collect this and use it for just a, a good formative assessment before starting uh, the next day. So when we come back the next day, we navigate in um, and then uh, we're going to get into groups. And so each uh, station that we had from the previous day is going to be represented in the group. So you're going to have a student from each station uh, that's going to share their uh, evidence, their explanation based on what they collected in their particular station. Uh, before we do that, we're going to make sure we review our norms and uh, do some work here with thinking about like listening to one another and responding to feedback. And while we're doing this, like what you really want to focus on is trying to help kids highlight some of those similarities and differences between what they saw in the stations. Um, and we're really trying to motivate the idea here that friction and air resistance are contact forces, that they're the result of lots and lots of collisions, and they ultimately are like stealing away that energy from the moving object. So after we do that and we uh, get some feedback and we share in our groups, we come together and we revise our model from um, the previous lesson. So this time we're going to go back and now we're going to add in all the places that friction could be happening um, and all the places that air resistance could be happening. And air resistance is a type of friction. We kind of separate these uh, just because I think it's helpful for the kids to sort of think of them as separate items right now when we're trying to model them and show where they are. We eventually uh, make the connection that air resistance is like is a type of friction. Um, but for our purposes here, we just want to really highlight them and sort of separate them out. And we're going to add in some arrows to show like where all of that energy is transferring to. And so we ultimately now can answer our, our wondering from a previous lesson, which was like where the energy is going. We now know that energy is getting transferred out into the track and into um, the air. Okay, so that is lesson nine. That sort of wraps up um, a lot of the big science ideas that we're going to figure out. So in the next lesson, we're going to um, have a uh, putting the pieces together lesson. And we'll have a, a, a summative assessment here. And so um, we realize we can answer a lot of questions on our, our driving question board. Um, and uh, we want to like return back to some of those early collisions to see if we can explain like why some things got damaged and some didn't. All right, let's talk about some tips and tricks because there's a little bit of things happening with all of these stations. Um, so for station one, um, personally, I like to put an extra launcher at the other end. The teacher guide recommends to have students move the fan from one side to another. In my classroom, this wasn't feasible with um, the number of outlets and things. I found it easier to just leave the fan and have a launcher at the other end and kids could just launch from both sides and flip um, the meter stick around. You do what works for you, but um, for me, I w was always struggling to find outlets. Um, at some point when the cart's going toward the fan, it's gonna eventually stop and start moving backwards. Um, and we just wanna focus students on like measuring the farthest point um, that the rear of the cart got. So that's what we're gonna uh, likely measure from depending on how the launcher's set up. I just tell the kids, just pick either the front or the back, make sure that you measure the same every time. Um, and we really want to cue students into making sure that they're using the same force in every trial. So for my students, I just told them to push uh, the launcher uh, to the max, um, which was, I think, 10 newtons for the launchers that we use. You can use the five newtons ones as well, depending on the amount of space. But they'll quickly see uh, what we want them to see in terms of how the fan and the no card um, cause different uh, changes in motion. Okay, station two. Uh, this is probably the place you're going to want to visit often and check in with students. These graphs are pretty challenging. And so I would always let the students like grapple with them for a little bit. And then I'd go visit this station um, because there's kind of a lot going on here. The first thing is, is I think there's words here that students don't necessarily know, um, like headwind and tailwind. Uh, you'll see like when they're looking at um, average miles per gallon, those something listed as a refuse truck. Right. So there's a lot of like unpacking around these graphs that uh, students need some assistance with. Um, generally, they can get the trends of it. 
but like the miles per gallon one can be a little tricky. Like kids don't really drive. And so this one can be a little bit tricky for them. Once they understand really what they're looking at, they can make a lot of sense of it. Um, but I think you're going to want to check in with this station pretty often. Each time a new group gets to the station, sort of circle back and uh, check in with them. By the way, every station has a handout with directions that go at it to help the students when they get there. Okay, station uh, three. Um, this is where students are going to rub that thermometer on the table. They also rub uh, styrofoam together and measure that as well. Um, you just want to make sure you have some additional uh, pieces of styrofoam ready, some additional erasers ready. Remind kids to uh, not point the thermometer at one another. It has a laser in it, so we want to make sure that stays out of people's eyes. Um, and uh, just really remind them to make sure that they're taking the temperature before and after. A lot of times students um, will forget about the before part and take just the temperature after they've um, rubbed it on the desk or rubbed the two styrofoam pieces together. And then station four, if possible, um, you really want the color images. You can see there, there's the carpet and a zoom in of tile and a zoom in of that um, sandpaper. Um, if possible, you know, color would be great. You can laminate them, use them year after year. If not, um, this is a station that also has uh, a device at it because of the simulation. So you may also just put two devices here and kids can scroll through the color images. Then you don't have to worry about printing them. Um, while the kids are uh, exploring with the simulation, uh, your job there is to really call attention to that particle motion. They'll see everything wiggling. Um, and uh, we want to call back to like what that means. If your kids haven't had uh, a lot of understanding of thermal energy, you might have to do a little bit more unpacking here about what it means for particles to speed up and how that relates to temperature. Okay, um, so in the last lesson, we did uh, introduce the words air resistance and friction. We wanna make sure now they are actually on our word wall. Um, I recommend doing that during part seven when we're updating our progress tracker. You will see it's not in the teacher guide to call it out, but this is definitely the place to do it and get those words up on um, your word wall. Uh, we have our model that we revise, um, and that's from uh, the previous lesson. And we are gonna call back to this. It is useful for uh, the next lesson when we're taking a look at the assessment. So I would definitely hang on to that, have it ready for your next lesson. All right, that is going to do it for our lesson. Um, hopefully you saw in this video that students really get to collect a lot of evidence and figure out a lot about what friction actually means. Um, and uh, if your students are like mine, um, I think they really didn't quite grasp what this word meant and they use it all the time. And I think when they finish this lesson, they, they walk away with like a, a very deep understanding of what that actually means. Um, and so I hope your, your students find uh, similar results. Come back and join us for the next lesson, lesson 10, and that's going to be our putting the pieces together. Um, and we have a, a nice assessment in that lesson around baseball. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.